Stacy, can you hear us in here? You can't hear me or you can't? Because I can't hear you. Mm -mm. Let me see if I can figure out why I can't hear you.
Go to unmute. Okay. Well, we couldn't hear Stacy. I see. I can't hear Stacy. Yeah. So we heard the other one is just not talking. Yeah. Yeah. Can we mute it? No. Stacy, you need to check your audio. You may probably need to check your audio. Because we can hear everybody, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Well, there's that. Okay. So almost be Stacy's audio. Yeah. Stacy, say something. No. I can't hear her either. Sometimes says you can go out and come back in and it works. Sometimes, Stacy, you can go out and come back in, and then it will work for you. You can try that as well. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes, you're good. Very good. Thank Uh, ma'am, uh, in the car, you can't be moving in that car.
All right, good morning, everyone. This is the detention docket for the 323rd District Court for Thursday, February 4th, 2021. In compliance with the Texas Supreme Court Emergency Order Number 33, we are not conducting in-person proceedings. However, we are proceeding through Zoom and to comply with the Texas Supreme, uh, I'm sorry, the Texas Constitution Open Courts Act. We are broadcasting these proceedings online on YouTube for the public to have meaningful access to what occurs inside their courtrooms. However, the court would like to remind people this is still a court proceeding. People are expected to behave appropriately for court. So that means please be dressed appropriately and behave appropriately. This also means please refrain from any kind of distracting movement in the background. Please do not have bright lights behind your head as that tends to shadow out your face. If you are not an officer of the court, meaning if you're a parent, you're expected to have your camera on. Um, Think no portion of this broadcast may be recorded, copied, or published. Violations of this order are punishable by contempt of court of up to six months in the Tarrant County Jail and a five hundred dollar fine. Anything else that you go over? Well, that sounds about it. All right, so we'll go with Aiden Aldaco. Are you Aiden? Yes, sir. All right, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. The law says when a kid's brought in to our facility, you have to see a judge within two days after decide whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you here then the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you are here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have appointed Alfred as your attorney for this case. All right, Aiden. So you're 16 years old. This all started, well, you were 13 with the burglary of a building. Mr. Vickerson, this says interstate compact. Was it another state that came here or? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, what state did his offense come out of? Well, interim is another county, I believe, Your Honor. Oh, so it, it came from another county in Texas. Okay. All right. So then in May of 19, you were adjudicated delinquent for possession of marijuana under two ounces, which you received probation for. Then now while you're out, see this is probation is expired. So let's see. Yesterday at about 630 in the afternoon, police were called for dispatch to a fight call. They got there, didn't find a fight, but then victims called the police and they'd been assaulted and the suspects were banging on the door. So the police went there, suspects had left. Two wow. male victims, one female victim, all 18 and 19 years old. They all had serious injuries to their face and head, busted lips, swollen eyes, cuts, and a broken tooth. Victims reported that they went to go meet Aiden and his 17 year old friend to fight. Aiden ran up one of the males, began hitting him in the face and head, but the victim left and then began to hit the other male victim. The victim fell to the ground and they continued to assault him. The female tried to pull Aiden and the companion off the victim. She was thrown. Ma'am, we can't have domesticated animals in a court hearing. All right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to mute it. I can't get it. Okay, ma'am, the, the dog is in another room, correct? Like, we won't be hearing the dog if I have to ask you questions? You're on mute. I don't believe you'll hear him, though, sir. Somebody was banging on the door. I apologize. Okay. Okay, the female victim tried to pull Aiden and the companion off the victim, but she was thrown to the ground and then kicked in the face and head. Two victims were eventually able to run and run away as well. And Aiden and his friend were located later. They denied being in the fight, but they had blood on their hands and clothes. Then they admitted to be in the fight, but that he was hit first. He was brought over here. A month ago, you were brought by the Grapevine PD for assault bodily injury. They're saying in December, police were dispatched for an assault. They got there, the medics were treating a 13 year old victim for injuries. He and his friends were playing basketball against Lee and Aiden. Aiden was upset because he was losing the game. Aiden thought the victim was trash talking grapevines, so he started to punch the victim in the face, who was from Louisville. He fell to the ground and he continued to punch him in the face. He had injuries and a cut, and Aiden admitted to the event, to the to the events. The case was filed in December and we're set for court for March 16th.
All right, Mom, why is, why is your son getting all these fights? Mom, Sorry. you're up. Um, I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm not really – I don't know what happened last night. I haven't um, had a chance to talk to him. I know what they're telling me. I know what I was able to find out through other witnesses. Um, I don't know what happened today or last night. I, a month ago, the kid came to the house and apologized to Aiden, actually. So I'm not, I know you can't talk about that today, but I'm not really sure what, what's going on, honestly, sir. I haven't had a problem with him at home. He helps out a lot. Um, he goes to school. He doesn't really have a problem with school at all. Sorry, I'm not used to this Zoom stuff. Please keep your camera still. Mr. Vixenson, did we give him a drug test? He yes, offered him the opportunity this morning, Your Honor. Uh, he was not able to provide a sample two different times this morning. Sorry. He said that uh, that they did one last night, but there's no record of that. He said that it was positive for marijuana. So I'm following up on that. Your Honor. Sir, this we just you conducted the right to be silent. Your, your attorney does not want you to talk. Is that right, Ms. Salford? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Bixon, can you find out why we didn't give him a drug test last night when he came? Because he came in fairly early. Yes, so, I can find out, Your Honor. I don't know why that wasn't done. Uh, when I saw that it wasn't done this morning, I asked them to do one right away. Okay. All right. So, Aiden, I'm going to let you know whenever a drug, when a, when a child refuses to give me a drug sample, I just assume you're positive for everything. I assume you're positive for cocaine, heroin, PCP. That's everything. And that's just part of you refusing a drug test. All right. I'm also concerned that you're pending an assault case and now you're involved in a fight. Even if the fight was mutual combat, I think this is the time that you're supposed to step out and step away and not get involved in fights especially with serious injuries. So at this point, I'm concerned about your, your safety and the safety of the community. If I was to release you, I'm going to go ahead and detain you. So I see that your hand is raised. If you have a question for me, I think Ms. Alford's okay with you asking me a question. But if you want to tell me something, I'm fairly certain she does not want you to tell me anything. All right. So do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? I need to tell you something. Okay. Your attorney does not want you to mind. tell me anything. Okay. Now, if you insist on telling me something, I'm not going to stop you, but I need you to understand that I am telling you, do not tell me anything. Your attorney is telling you, do not tell me anything. Okay? But, sir, I did take a drug test this morning. Okay. So, Mr. Victorson is, so somebody's lying then. Right? Yes, sir. Well, Your Honor, I'll find out, and I will get back to the court after detention hearings on the results of that, if that's true. Okay. And then, if, please let me know why detention is telling you one thing when the truth is something else. I mean, this is, this is a problem that we need to fix. If they're actually administering drug tests and then telling you that they're not, then we have a bigger issue here. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, yeah. this, you could ask the people in this room, they watched me take the drug test. Okay, so is this the time you're telling me how to do my job? No, sir. All right, so I'm detaining you. Ajati and Austin. Right here, sir. Yes, Mr. Sir. Austin, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10-day hearing. You've been here for 10 days. I'm deciding whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you in custody, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. And Mr. Shoemake, Shoemaker is your attorney. Yes, sir. All right. Hello, Mr. Shoemaker. How are you? Look like Frank Adler from that camera picture. I'm, I'm sorry? Your haircut and your glasses make you look oh. like... Mr. Lofton, doesn't he look like Frank Adler in that picture? I'm not sure I know. He Frank. looks better than Frank Adler in that picture. I mean, that's, uh, I mean. The math does me wonders, Judge. So. That is amazing, actually, that you're correct, Your Honor. I mean, that's, uh, anyway. Frank, do you have a mask on? Do you have a mask by you, by the way? Do I have a mask by me? No, does Frank have one? I'm just, does Frank? Frank's here on Zoom. I'll say this. If, if Frank was a superhero, this would be like, the scene where he drinks the potion and becomes the villain with the mask on, because that's uh anyway, I apologize. I know the court didn't ask, but wow. I didn't know I was Frank white. is one handsome man too. So, uh, I mean, that's. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so Mr. Austin, you're 15 years old. You're here. You're well. First, you're level one outstanding. You're here in an aggravated robbery case. Victim spoke with the police saying working at AT&T store. Suspects entered, pointed a gun, took him back room. When they were leaving, they took the victim's iPhone. Was able to track back. The FBI got involved to arrest them in Dallas. And. Ajathin can be identified by her shoes and jacket. Miss Guerrero was was the video. Was he the one with a gun in the video, or was he a bystander? He was not with the gun, Judge. He, he was the one holding. No, he was, no not. he was not. Okay, Judge. If I might, uh, I think at our last hearing there had been some previous confusion that he did have a gun. I think after everyone's had the opportunity to examine the photographs, it's it's clear that he did not. Okay, so, and you're level one outstanding, which is good for you, Ajatin. I guess my question, Ms. Guerrero, is why did his level go to level one outstanding uh, two days ago? What, what was he before? On the first judge, he was a level one acceptable because he was overplaying. I guess they warned him about six times about that. Okay. How far did he drop down? Level one acceptable. That's the lowest he's been? I'm sorry, how far did he drop down his, during his stay here? That's the lowest that he, he's been, because of course when he came in, he, they started him at a level two outstanding, but right. that's the lowest that he's dropped to, a level one acceptable. Does he live in Dallas County? Yes, uh, Judge, but I was told by his attorney that he would be leaving, living with an aunt in Rollette. Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, his aunt, Cherie Cole, uh, I think if, if, if Ms. Guerrero is available uh, this afternoon, is going to call uh, Ms. Guerrero and give all his living uh, arrangements and, and kind of an exit plan to Ms. Guerrero. All right, so Ms. Guerrero, you, have you seen the video? No, sir. Okay. So my main question is, there's three people coming in the store. There was one gun identified in the video or through the police report, right, Ms. Guerrero? Yes, Judge. Okay. I, I, did see, I did see the still of the um, three, and there was one individual holding the gun. Okay. And the individual the clothes, the, the individual carrying the gun, the clothes he was wearing did not match the clothes that Mr. Austin was wearing when he was arrested shortly thereafter, correct? Correct. All right, Mr. Austin, seems like you've shown me that you can behave. You can follow the rules here at detention mm -hmm. by keeping your behavior level up. Uh, being overly playful is something that sometimes I can forgive. Not always, but it seems like over a you've shown a pattern of behavior over a length of time that this is just kind of a one-off thing that makes me feel more comfortable releasing you. So, um, you have a parent here? Judge, no, I don't see his, his sister okay. on here. And I know that, like I said, the attorney told me that his aunt was gonna reach out to me. Right. Okay, so this is what I wanna do, Ms. Guerrero and Mr. Shoemaker. I'm okay yes, releasing sir. this child, all right? However, okay. the aunt has to understand under the family code, if she's the one that takes possession of the child, she is the one responsible for returning the child to court. All right? yes, if, sir. Fails to return the, if the child fails to appear in court when required, uh, then there can be a, a warrant issued for her arrest. And yes, she sir. has to have that understanding before she signs the papers for us to release him. All right. So Ms. Guerrero, make sure she understands that. And if she wish whatever responsible adult wants to take possession of this child, then I'm okay releasing him. Uh, Ms. Guerrero, do you think electronic monitor is probably appropriate on this one or... I would say for safety reasons, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that, just based on the severity of the offense. Uh, so right now, Ajathin, I'm signing a detention order because there is no responsible adult to take you, okay? However, when one does come up and, and talk to Ms. Guerrero and is agreeing to take possession of you and willing to accept the responsibility in case you run off that they can sit in jail until you show up to court, then we'll go ahead and sign one, a release order for you uh, with electronic monitor, okay? Yes, sir. So, but now... I'm going to warn you, if your behavior level drops, 
in between now and when your mom or sister or whoever picks you up, then you're not getting out. You still have to be level one outstanding. You understand? Yes, sir. So you can, all, you can ruin this deal, but as long as you do what you're supposed to do, then we'll release you as soon as we can find an adult to take you, okay? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Austin, yes. thank okay. you for behaving while you're back there. Thank you for showing me, but you understand what this means. This is like, you can't be slow to comply at home, right? If, there, mm -hmm. if your aunt gives you a DNA, what's the DNA? Do not associate. Yeah, if she gives you a do not associate, what do you gotta do? Do what she said, don't associate. Not associate, right? Yes, sir. And then, of course, you can't associate with the two people that you're arrested with. You understand? Yes, sir. That's no Snapchat, no Instagram, nothing. Do not, do not associate, okay? All right. Mr. Shoemaker, were you going to say something? Judge, I was just going to ask Ms. Ferrero, uh, what would be the best time for me to have uh, Ms. Cole contact you? Um, I will give her a call when I'm done with detention hearings. I have a, a few more. Yes, ma'am. I will tell her to expect your call. Thank you. And you got my email with her number, correct? Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. I can't get over this. All right. Dallas Carter. Frank, did you see it? You saw the resemblance? I saw it. I didn't know I was white. And of course, Trent's got something to say all the time. <laughs> Trent always has something to say. He has no filter. Mr. Caveman, these Zoom hearings frighten me, so. <laughs> Can't help himself. Okay. All right, Mr. Carter. Oh, you're out of custody, right? All right, Mr. Carter, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I have asked for this hearing because I would decide whether to leave you in the community or to take you into custody. By leaving, if I take you into custody, the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Mr. Daniels is your attorney on this case. So let's go back, Mr. Carter. Back January 12th, Orange PD brought you in for burglary of a vehicle. They were to ID, uh, giving false information. They were saying at about 11 o'clock at night, you were dispatched to, they were dispatched to a suspicion person call. When the officer met them, they saw two black males acting suspicious near, suspiciously near vehicle. But one of the people identified as you, seated in the front right passenger seat. And they said after the two people saw him, they ran from there to a wooded area. Officers then found three people matching the description nearby at a gas station. There was a field lineup and they had a, he, the caller identified two people. and one of them being Ethan Brown. Then the officers, when they were talking, realized that Ethan Brown was actually Dallas Carter and that you were a runaway. And so you're escorted home and released to your mom. Four days later, you are brought him in the police department for possession of marijuana and drug-free zone. One of the police, while at Nichols Junior High, the, a student told a teacher that another student stopped, smelled like weed. So you were escorted by the police. There was an administrative search and they found a blunt in your backpack. You admitted it was yours, and you smoked with your friends before school, and the lab confirmed it to be marijuana. And then you're out on these two cases when two days ago, <clears throat> Arlington PD brought you in. About 4.45 in the afternoon, they were dispatched to apartments about a burglary. Many workers saw three juveniles jump the fence, go to the vacant apartment, and courtesy officer went there, found three juveniles, and the door was damaged, locks damaged, shoe print on the door, damaged to sheetrock, and one of the juveniles <clears throat> said he was Corey Baker, and they admitted his name was Dallas Carter. And so they all brought over here. You were evidently on DPP, so you were given a chance to make this all go away if you could just follow the rules and do what you're supposed to do. But yet we give you a drug test, and it seems like you, you're on DPP for giving a fake name to the police and for criminal, let's see, and then DPP for possessing weed at school. And then now you're brought in for giving a fake name to the police and now you're positive, you're continue to smoke weed. So you have learned absolutely nothing from your experiences here. So Mr. Carter, I'm gonna go ahead and detain you I feel like you are a danger to yourself as well as to the community and you just, you're just not learning. So 
Mm, At this point, so. yeah, you need to listen to your mom and just not talk. All right. Mm -hmm. So at this point, man, I don't even know what to say to you. I mean, you knew what the rules were. You had multiple chances and you just don't care. You're going to do what you want to do. Mom, um, I have a feeling he kind of has his attitude with you on a daily basis. So hopefully we can help him and, and make him make better decisions going forward. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. You don't have nothing on you? That's because it can get lost. I don't have nothing on you. All right, so the next one, Ms. Grant, has been waived. We have Miles Lewis. Just a second, please. Dallas, go back there, act like you have some sleep. That's all I'm asking, because it can get so much worse, okay? Mr. Carter, you need to listen to your mom. Here's the thing. There's no situation in life that's so bad that you can't make it worse. All right, the problem here is you have certain rules and expectations, you didn't follow them, and now you're being held accountable. Why, why don't you sit down? Because I don't even think you're listening to me. Mr. Carter, please have a seat. Sir, can I, can I explain? There's no situation in life that you can't make it worse, right? So I'm telling you, you had expectations, you had rules that you were supposed to follow, you decide you're not going to follow it. You're showing me that you haven't learned anything by giving a fake name to the police or by you're not supposed to smoke weed. The fact well, that you haven't learned think, anything makes me think, stuff. well, you know like, what? Am I just wasting my time? You just not listen. No. I'm I mean, if you don't want to listen to me, then I'm not going to say anything. Like I, yes, right? I'm trying to impress upon you, make sure you understand what I'm looking for in you so you understand how this works, yes, right? I'm expecting you just to not break the law. That's all I'm expecting. So show me that you can't break the law and things are good. But if you're going to do what you want to do, right, and act a fool, like even when you're talking back to your mom right now, Right? That's showing me a lack of respect for your mother. So that's why here at detention, I want to see you get to the level one outstanding, follow the rules, behave. That tells me I can let you go home to your mom where you can respect her. That's what I'm looking for is you show respect for the rules. You show respect for authority. You show respect for the law. That's all I'm asking for. It's not that hard. But if you're going to do it your way, you and I are having problems for the next six years of your life. All right? So, I mean, take it or leave it. it. It may mean nothing to you. I'm just trying to give you advice. Believe it or not, I'm not working against you. I'm actually trying to help you. All right, so think about it a little bit. And if it's not worth your thought, then that's fine. I'm not offended. I'm just, I'm really, I'm offering this with the spirit of trying to help you and make your life better. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Miles Lewis. Mr. Lewis, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We've appointed Mr. Lofton. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, Miles, you're 16, almost 17. Miles, you've never been here before. So. Uh, let's hold a second. Ms. Paxton, I see here. Oh, wait, no, he was here for in 2020. Like exactly a year ago, today. Or yesterday, for burglary of a vehicle and identity theft. Ms. Paxton, what's going on with those cases? Um. Let me look real quick, Your Honor. I'm sorry? Um, I'm going to look real quick and see. Wait, are these supposed to be, so in the present offense, it says 20. Does that supposed to be 21? Um, oh, you know what? There's I'm a line break. <laughs> no, no, it says 2320, but the next line says 21. So he had a, the only previous thing he had was. Uh, prevention and intervention back in 15. Okay. And so those are those are current offenses. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm just reading it wrong. Confusing. All right. So Miles, you really you haven't had you haven't been arrested before. You're almost 17 years old. So you almost made it to adulthood. Let's see. Mansfield PD brought you in. 
yesterday at 3 40 in the morning there's a suspicious person's call police got there there's a honda civic with two people in it they ran a vehicle check and the license plates were taken from another vehicle so they went in there Talk to you, who is a front passenger and a 17-year-old driver. There are tobacco products in the vehicle, so they searched you two. Your friend had two checks in his wallet that belonged to a David Gonzalez. So they took the checks, searched the vehicle, located several stolen driver's licenses and other ID forms, several iPhones, and a pair of AirPods. They also found two pistols under the driver's seat. The police spoke to two victims that the doorbell camera footage showed Miles trying to break into one vehicle and companion break into another. So you were detained and transported here. Ms. Paxton, did they put the, the weapons cases on the 17 year old? I am not aware if they did or not, Your Honor. All right, so mom, are you mom? Yes. My first question is why is he out at 3.40 in the morning? That's my question, sir. I was asleep. I was right. assuming that Miles was asleep in his bedroom. I don't condone bad behavior. Right. I'm highly disappointed, and I just want better. I yeah, don't know. No, we both. So, Mom, I, you've done a great job with this kid. If he's made it, he's three months from being 17, and he's never been arrested before. So it seems like he's probably a good kid that, see, what I'm trying to figure out is it's just one bad decision. They got picked up for, or is this ongoing behavior I have to be worried about? I will honestly tell you that I am having issues with Miles. You and are I, having I am, issues? I am. I'm a single mother. I love him to death. He's not the worst kid. The foundation have been laid. He will tell you, yes, sir, no, sir. He means well. He just got, I think he's getting caught up with the wrong people. And I'm just praying for a change, and I don't want it to go any further. And I'm hoping that this is a mistake and that he have learned from it and he will make the utmost changes so he can be the best citizen. So that is my desire, that is my prayer, and that is what I hope for. And that is the honest God truth. Okay, so mom, two questions for you. What are his grades like? Um, Mouse has been struggling in school. Mouse has ADHD, COVID did not help. So his grades are average, they could be better. And I do struggle to make sure he stay on task and I push every day for greatness. He's normally a great sports athlete, have full potential, and just life can take advantage of him. But I want him to know this is a mistake that could have cost him his life. He got to do better. Yeah, people get shot breaking the cars. I know. I'm aware. That could have been his life. Yeah. So when you say his grades are all right but could be better, what kind of – is he, he's is he passing, passing everything? He's passing. He, I think he maybe fell in one class at this particular time. Okay. Is he in-person school or online? He's online. Online, okay. Is Mansfield ISD he, not doing he, it? Personally? He goes, um, he actually is not going online. He's uh, he's hybrid. He just started back going in person to try to make sure he could stay on point. He's going two days like a hybrid system. Is that helping him? Uh, I think the going in a couple of days helps him stay more focused and right. be more diligent. Yes, sir. I'm asking, in your opinion, does that is that helping him? What? Going hybrid, going some in person. He has to go some in person. I think he struggles trying to do it alone. Yeah. Have you noticed it's helping him? Yes, sir. Okay. That's Does he prescribe medication for his ADHD? I just uh, contacted MHMR to try to get him back on something to get him focused and ask him. Of course, he didn't want it, but I was like, baby, between you and I, you need something to help you stay focused. Okay. Whatever it takes, let's figure it out. So I then I just contacted MHMR again to try to so get he, him back on something. So he does not have a prescription yet? Not today, but he okay. has had prescriptions. He has been diagnosed okay. years ago with depression and ADHD. Yes. Does he have an appointment set up yet? Um, I just talked to the care intaker. No, I need to make sure that there's an appointment set up. Is set. he receiving 504 services? Yes. he's He's been under 504 since he was like five years old. I mean, okay. since he was like a fifth grade. I'm sorry. Okay. What siblings are in the home? A sister. Who How is, old is she? She's 18. Okay. Any, any other siblings? One, one other. No, just he has other siblings, but only one in the home. Okay. Does your son use drugs? Do you know? I'm not sure. I'm questioning it at this point, though. No, uh, I, no, on, seriously. Mom, I, you know. I, I, I've considered, I think, I think he smoked cannabis before. Right. I do. 
Okay. But but I but the, I'm not sure exactly what he does. Oh, I understand. Truthfully, I, I question, I asked. I want him to be straight and narrow, but I don't know. Okay. All right. So Miles, I'm this is these are minor offenses in the big picture of things. They're just things that can lead to much bigger things. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you know, had the police put those guns, even one of those guns on you, I would be detaining you right now. No questions asked. It's not even an issue. When a kid is caught with a gun, I always detain them. Well, not always. There's exceptions. But generally, everyone, everyone knows they're being detained. Just it's a safety issue. I'm not comfortable with the fact there were guns in the car. But there's nothing that said that the police felt like you were associated with it or you even knew about it. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I also really like your mom. Right? There's something about her where she actually cares. There are a lot of moms that show up here with an attitude. And they just think that... Uh, that their kids are worthless or their kids are little angels. But your mom's keeping it real with me. She's telling me what it is, what it is. She's saying you're good. She's saying the bad. She's laying it out there and trusting me to make a decision. As a judge, that makes me want to trust her more because she's being straight, straight up with me, right? And I, I will lay it out there and let her make her decision the best she can. So um, at this point, what I'm inclined to do is I'm inclined to release you on electronic monitor the reason why for the electronic monitors, because it was 3.40 in the morning. You were supposed to be at home. So obviously this may be the first time or this may be the hundredth time that you've snuck out while your mom's <laughs> sleeping. But either way, that's unacceptable. Now, before I actually sign this order to release you, I'm going to ask you a question and I don't want you to answer the question yet. The question I'm going to ask you is if I give you a drug test, are you going to be positive for any kind of substance you shouldn't be? Since you are not taking your prescription right now, you should be clean for everything. Now, before you answer this question, there's three ways this works out. I, I'm going to ask you, if I ask you if you're clean, if I give you a drug test, you tell me that you're clean, then no problem. You go home today. Like your mom leaves this courtroom, sits in a waiting room. They check you out, put you with electronic monitor, and you go home with your mom. You actually get to have lunch with your mom today. The other answer is you tell me that you're dirty. We'll give you a test to see how dirty you are. And then I will put you, I'll probably make you stay here until you're level one outstanding which is about three days, just to show that you can follow the rules. You understand that uh, I understand that I can trust you to listen to your mom and she knows, well, I know that you're able to behave. It's not a, you can't do it and it's unfair. It's that you can do it and you're just choosing not to if I was to release you and you don't follow your mom's rules. The third option is you tell me that you're clean and you actually test dirty and I'm actually gonna keep you in here for probably about a week. It's good. Well, it's gonna be level one outstanding and you gotta hold it for three days. So it's up to you. So it'll take about a week for you to get out of here just to prove to me that you can behave and that you understand there's consequences to lying to the court as well. All right, so Mr. Lewis, if I give you a drug test today, are you gonna be clean or dirty? Um, well, the only thing I would say, I'll probably- No, 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 there's, three, there's two answers. Either you're clean or you're dirty. That's you have to give me an answer. You have to pick one or the other. Uh, probably dirty, but not that much dirty. No, no, no. You, you got it. It's not a probably. Are you going to be clean or dirty? Dirty. Dirty. What are you going to be dirty for? Uh, marijuana. That's it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, mom will give him a drug test. If he's dirty, then he has to get to level one outstanding, which can take, it takes three days, the quickest. Yesterday would have been day one. I, I think yesterday would have been day one. And then he will be able to go home with you. Uh, the way the weekend works out, it'll be Monday, right? And then we'll we'll actually give him probably random urinalysis on this and just make sure that he's not using marijuana. But he will, part of this mom is so he understands the rules. The rules we have here in our facility are gonna be very similar to the rules that you expect your son to do. Things like, if you tell him to do something, he has to do something, right? If you tell him to do chores, he's gotta do chores. If he can't hang out with certain people, he can't, that's what we call here a do not associate. All right, if you say do not associate with this, this, you know, well, all the words I can think of, if, if it's not good for him to be around certain people, you just tell him and he shouldn't do it. But he has to prove that, that to me here first. So that way we know this is not an ADHD mental health issue. This is a uh, Miles making a bad decision or refusing to do what he's supposed to do issue. All right. That's what I'm looking for. So Miles, we'll give you a drug test, see what the levels are. As long as it's only THC, I will release you on the first business day that you are level one outstanding, okay? <coughs> All, right. All right, mom, do you have any questions for me?
Yes, what happens after that, sir? After that, there's a case pending. The probation officer will stay in touch with you. The attorney will stay in touch with you. Uh, this is a case where I feel like my honest opinion, mom, is you and I together, we can set Miles on the right path and he will not Brilliant. sink into, into bad decisions. Right? Mom, this is not, he cannot be committed to TJJD for this. These are misdemeanors. Um, this, is a, this is really just kind of a decision-making process issue that hopefully the court and the parent, we can work together on this and set Miles on the right path. My goal, thank you so much. Thank you, mom. Thank Miles, you, mom. I love you. You too. Joseph Navarez, I Thank believe you. Mr. DeCorian Montague has waived. How you doing, Judge Kim? Hey, Mr. Navarez, I'm doing okay, how are you? Good, sir, maintain. Good. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Navarez, this is, Mr. Schuyler, this is one currently Subject to uh, the state follow in writ of mandamus? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Joseph, do you understand what's going on? Well, first, this is a detention hearing. Do you understand what's going on? I, I have to review your case, decide whether to keep you, release you. You have the right to remain silent, right to an attorney. Yes, so, Joseph, do you understand what's going on in your case? Did yes, Mr. Sir. Adler have a chance to really explain this to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So you understand the people above me, the second court of appeals, decided that your case is an important case, that they are breaking their schedule and putting everything on hold to make sure that they deal with this first, okay? Yeah. So this is something, like I said, kind of impacts every court across the state of Texas. This is, really, really, this is about during the age of coronavirus, when we can and cannot go forward and how we can or cannot get forward, okay? Yeah. So I'm just letting you know that uh, I am by law, I'm ordered to not do anything with your case. Like I can't touch it, can't do anything. Your attorney, they dumped a bunch of work on him to do in a very short period of time. So he's working on that. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that you understand what's going on. There's, we cannot go forward because there's a court order saying I cannot go forward. Uh, just can, can I ask you a question? Sure. So, so that means I'm not going to have a court anytime soon? Well, I don't know. It depends on judges. I make a very big effort to make sure all these cases move forward, like at a steady pace to get done. Not all judges do that. So they're going to do what's... So Mr. Navarro, what you have to understand is for some some legal issues are so big and so important that judges cannot rush it. They have to be very careful and take their time doing it. And your case happens to maybe fall under that. And so it's not a your fault thing. This is just a very unique, uh, one of a kind scenario. All right. Okay, sir. So just to let you know, you are level. Uh, wait a minute. Why'd you? Why'd you just get back to level one today? Oh, because I'm going to be honest with you, Judge Kim. Uh, I was a 1A yesterday. The reason I, I was a 1A because they they draw, they took my points because I took a little long in the shower. Off of, off, that, that's the only reason, Ms. Guerrero? Is that it? Uh, you're on mute, Ms. Guerrero. I'm pulling up his information right now. <coughs> Because I didn't have my mask on. So I know, I know, I know it wasn't that serious because I, I won't be tripping in the bag. I just, I'll be trying to. Hold on a second. Wait for Miss Burrow. There it says on two, three, out of uniform, three times, profanity times three. Oh, no. Oh, uh, come on. It's Navarez. All right. The uniform, the mask. I understand. I don't have the mask either, but you got to watch your language. You, you just can't. There's ladies I, present, right? Yes, I ain't need they take me up for that, but I because they told me it was something about my mask and, and like because I got out the shower like a little late. So, okay, well, I'm kidding, though. I'm kidding. Okay, well, I, I'm not I'm not mad about this. Okay, so I don't we don't have a parent here, do we? No, sir. Okay, all right, Mr. Navarez, given that the severity of your offense, you know, I, I need to detain you. Okay, yeah. So, but I just want to make sure we have this face to face. I just want to show you the respect of explaining what's going on in your case. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, Judge Kim, uh, yes. can I have a question to talk to my attorney? Well, he can call you, but I, I can't. There's other kids behind you, so I can't stop things just for you to talk to your attorney. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Virus. Emiliano Paez. Yes, Your Honor. 
Hello, Mr. Payet. I'm Dr. Kim. This is a detention hearing. Do you mind sitting up? You're in court. The law says when a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you here or to release you. If I keep you here, the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. So, Mr. Payet, you've never been here before. No, wait. This is from November. Oh, you were, you were here in November. So, you have a pending case for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, evading arrest with a motor vehicle, and evading arrest on foot. So I'm guessing Ms. Aguirre, what, uh, accused of stealing a car, running from the police in the car, and then stopping, running on yes, foot? Okay, so yeah, stolen vehicle. There's a police light, chase, chase the vehicle to the north side, stop, Emilio and the passenger got out, took off running in different directions, female stayed in the vehicle. All right, so February 3rd, we issued a warrant for you since there was a curfew alert on February 2nd. And you broke the electronic monitor restrictions from about 4 o'clock to 6.30. You were outside the home, and there was no scheduled timeout. So, Ms. Sagiri, did we look to see, did he just stay on the property but outside the house? No, Your Honor, he was actually at a dentist appointment. Oh, okay, that's the next paragraph. All right, so mother, mother texted us asking time to go to dentist appointment on February 2nd. And we said we'd not approve it until she called us to discuss a curfew alert from January 28th. When you got home at two o'clock, you were at the Pizza Bistro and Whataburger and mom did not let us know. So we also found out on the same day that your middle school told us you were enrolled on December 10th and you have excessive absences. You last logged on to school on January 12th and never attended a full day of school. Do we have a parent here? No, Your Honor, mother had to work. Well, Mr. Paez, if you're not going to school, then I'm gonna make sure you go to school. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and detain you and We'll see you at the 10-day hearing. If you can show me that you can get the level of standing, follow all the rules, I think I'm likely to give you another chance again. <clears throat> but you have to understand that school is very, very important to me. If you're just going to skip school, then I have to keep you here. Okay? And that's just the way it's going to be. All right, thank you, Mr. Pius. Thank you, Judge. Danny Parker. That has got to be the dumbest reason to go to detention. You can't log in to online school. All right, Mr. Parker, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10 day hearing deciding whether to keep you here, release you. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Your attorney, Mr. Houston. Dwayne, are you here? Oh, there we go. Good morning, Dwayne. All right, so Mr. Parker, you just turned 17. Happy birthday. Thanks. We're, let's see, back in July, let's see, in August, you were released from detention at a detention hearing. Mom moved out of Tarrant, went to Abilene. You were supposed to be there. Then you were caught here back in Tarrant County in November. One of the Fort Worth surveillance cameras found you adjusting a waistband, looking like you had a gun. You had a gun in your pocket. And so you were brought over here. And I think you were here for like vacation or, or trip or something. And you were positive for marijuana, methamphetamines, and amphetamines. So we did a placement search ordered at the last detention hearing and we have completed the psychological court setting is February 18th and you're level one outstanding and you've been level outstanding. All right. All right, Danny, you know why I've been detaining you, right? I've been telling you this every time. Okay. The street drugs, the methamphetamine, right? It just really worries me. I'm really concerned about releasing you until you actually have drug treatment. Okay. That's just, you know, you've actually been really behaving really well. This, you know how I feel about guns and that's, I hold kids because of guns. I think you've done enough to show me I'm not worried about the gun. You have yes, another weapon, the danger issue. My concern right now is you going back and, and using more street drugs. Okay. And that's that's my big thing. All right, that's that's what's making the decision for me. I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're level one outstanding. I know it's not easy to keep it for that long without dipping down to level one acceptable. 
So you're doing a good job. I just need to let you, I, I want to give you the respect of telling you why I'm making this decision. It's a street drug issue. That's how serious it is. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and continue. We do have a hearing coming up and the psychological report will come back. Uh, the placement search needs a psychological report. All right. So I just, Danny, I just want you to be clean from street drugs and and then move on with your life. I think you've got great things ahead of you, but it'll never happen unless you actually go through counseling and treatment for the street drug use, okay? All right, thank you, Mr. Parker. Quinton Sales. Sales, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10-day hearing. Been here for 10 days, deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you here, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. Mr. Adneji is your attorney. Good morning, Mr. Adneji. And let's see, your level one outstanding. I'm going to ask Mr. Houston, why is you got level one outstanding today? What happened? Um, your Honor, I'm coming from Mr. Houston. Okay. Uh, he's level one outstanding today. Uh, look like he's been on level two since January 27th. Uh, and on the 29th, he was written up for being the for defiant to staff instructions. And this is after the escape attempt on New Year's Eve, right? I think that was before the escape attempt. New escape attempt was December 31st. Yeah. And the show he was written up on December 29th. I'm sorry. Yes, this was after it said right, January, right. January 29th. All right, Mr. Sales, I'm trying to escape from a secure facility. That is, I mean, that's huge. You're lucky you're not, they didn't charge you with a felony <clears throat> for that. But at this point, if you're trying to escape from here, that tells me that if I let you go, I'm, I don't think you'll come, come to court. So I just, I've got to detain you. The law says that that's one of the factors I consider. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and detain you. I'm glad you're level, level outstanding. You're having some problems where all this stuff can come up in your final hearing to decide what to do with you. So you really need to behave back there. You need to do what you need to do. Okay? Yes, just don't play with the system. It all comes back against you, all right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Sales. Thank you, thank you Judge. Thank you, Mr. Adniji. So at this point, these proceedings have been published uh, on YouTube for the public to have meaningful access to these court proceedings. However, Texas Family Code Chapter 54.08C states that when a child is under 14 years of age, that court hearings are presumed to be closed to the public unless the court finds that the public or the child are better served by opening these proceedings to the public. This court, unable to make those findings, will now discontinue the live stream of these court proceedings. Please wait 20 seconds for the tape delay. Well, Mr. Richardson, did you need something? I just wanted to report mm -hmm. that child did produce a urine sample just before we called him for the okay. hearing. Can you stick around to after this one? Because I have a lot of questions on that one. 